What's up, gamers in the sorts? It's your boy, your homie, the Rebel Dottie. Now, I'm doing something that I've never really done before. Never really been like a big news talker. Now, you know, I can rant, rave, and all the other stuff, but uh, we got Borderlands right around the corner. We got Tiny Tina's Wonderlands coming very soon. And um, if you know me, you know I'm a huge Borderlands fan, if it isn't obvious. It isn't. But I want to break down this stuff. This stuff. That they just announced what the end game is going to be like, and it sounds freaking sick. So let's let's beep it, I guess. Okay, so let's go ahead and break this down. Let's look into it. Oh, it's our first time doing one of these like uh, news-related videos, and I, I'm happy it could be Borderlands. Okay, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands Dev Diary number five: Challenge the Chaos Chamber. Get developer insights on Cast Chamber, an endlessly replayable endgame dungeon that changes with every run. Okay, here's the reveal trailer. Let's peep. I haven't seen a lot of gameplay footage of this yet. Truth be told. They already, they already got streamers on this. That's really good. Jealous. Oh, they okay. Their names though, they're very placeholder. That sounds awesome. Ew, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, um to be totally honest, it was kind of a dog shit trailer. I mean, it didn't really show anything, I guess. It just showed them shooting people. I think they could have done a better job, like, you know, throw some text on the screen and just break down what's going on there. Because now I got to go through the walls of text, the paragraphs, and really, like, figure out what that is. It's fine. It's fine. It's nice to see some gameplay. I, I haven't actually seen any gameplay. I, I try to stay away from too many trailers, but if this news kind of stuff I'm doing here hits well and you guys like it, then I can I can do that more. I can start breaking down all the news. I can fuck the spoilers. I'll get spoiled before anybody. And then you make the decision if you want to get spoiled by clicking on my videos. Or whatever, you boner. You know what's more intense than a plain old dungeon? A dungeon that changes every time you enter it for countless possibilities and rewards. Enter the Chaos Chamber, the core endgame loop of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Within the mythical Chaos Chamber is an ever-shifting portal into a randomized dungeon full of unique variables, killer enemies, and methods to make your run more or less challenging depending on how brave you're feeling. Should you prove victorious, your rewards will be grand and your prowess may become the stuff of legend. In this installment of the Tiny Tina's Wonderlands Dev Diary series, you'll get to know the randomized trials that await you in the Chaos Chamber and what you can do to give yourself a leg up on your enemies or crank up the difficulty to new extremes if you're feeling spicy. But no matter how prepared you think you are, there's really no telling what you'll encounter when you step into a portal opened by a gigantic crystalline D20 in the sky. So interesting. So they're going for like an endless gameplay loop. And I feel like Mayhem and any other like end game ideas that Gearbox has had for Borderlands doesn't necessarily feel endless. It, it does have a limit to what you could do, right? Like this, this feels like if it is like procedurally generated, which is the vibe I'm getting, which I have not deep dived into this yet. That's I'm doing that right now. It sounds like it should be infinite. You know, maybe it's a Halo crossover. I don't know. It's kind of, maybe embrace chaos, dude. At their most basic, a normal Chaos Chamber run is a randomized challenge that should take around 20 to 30 minutes to complete. Your path through the dungeon goes like this. Three randomized dungeon rooms where you'll need to clear out a room to clear out a number of enemies before you can proceed, then a mini boss fight followed by three more dungeon rooms, and finally a full-on main boss fight as a grand finale. Each time you complete a room that isn't immediately before a boss fight, you'll open two portals that give you a degree of choice over what you'll encounter in the next room. You have three lives to make it to the end of the dungeon. Lose them all and your run is a failure, but don't fret, you still get to keep any weapon or gear you picked up during the run. That's awesome. We have over 60 level layouts which mix and match throughout a dungeon run. Says Kent Rockford. Roachfort? Sure. Ro Roquefort. Lead game designer on Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. On top of all that, all the many types of enemies from the game can show up with th up to three different kinds of armies in one room. There are also explosive barrels and traps that populate based on the room. Some are smaller, some are bigger. Our level designers went with what felt appropriate for each particular combat area. Well, 
after reading that chunk. I would say I like the fact that you don't lose any of your gear if you lose in the dungeon, making it so it doesn't feel like a wasted time that you spend in there, and then you can just go and try and run it again. Because this is something that they, that they definitely seem like you want to keep running it 10 to 20 times a day. If you've already done everything else, you know you beat the main storyline, and you can just keep running this, and if, if the level design is fun, I hope it's procedurally generated. I haven't seen any confirmation on that yet. Obviously, we haven't seen that in this text but there's still quite a bit more, so maybe they will mention or not. I think procedurally generated can work really well sometimes, unless they've already procedurally generated them before, like when designing the game and just generated like a million different ones you can get. And sometimes some people could get the same one, kind of like, what is it, uh, No Man's Sky? How they have, they created this entire universe and you know, there's a chance you can go in the same one as somebody else. Hopefully it's not just like a hundred. Like, that's fine and everything. Unless they're really well made. Like, if they can make them as good as like, say, a multiplayer map is in like Halo 3 back in the day. Where you can play it a million times. And it always has variety and it's always fun. That's fine. But if, you know, it, I guess we're going to have to keep reading. We have over 60 level layouts which will mix and match throughout a dungeon run. It says right there. Eh. I guess that Kent Rock Rockfort guy had me in my head. So I'm an idiot. There's 60 different layouts that can match and match. That's kind of vague, but it's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. Everybody's fine. Relax. Completing Chaos Chamber runs is a great way to farm for loot once you've finished the main story campaign, but it's even more important for those of you who are looking to min-max min your gear and assemble all the pieces of your perfect character build. By successfully beating a Chaos Chamber, you'll earn more moon orbs. An in-game currency you can spend at the Enchantment Reroller Station in Brighthoof. Every time you use the Enchantment Reroller, you'll be offered a random replacement for the enchantment effect on your gear or the option to keep the one you've got. By rerolling the enchantments on your favorite pieces of gear, you can push their power even further by finding the enchantment that best synergizes with your loadout. Rerolling won't take many moon orbs when you first start out, but it'll be exponentially more expensive the more times you reroll the same item. That sounds good. I mean, you gotta have something else on top of that. And I hope... I hope there's other stuff more... Playable areas that are still fun to go back and run through and grind out specific weapons there that you can use the loot you get from here to make that experience a little better. Because we like an endless gameplay loop while we wait for the next Borderlands because we're getting Tiny Tina Wonderlands, but we're also thinking about the next Borderlands. Borderlands is always around and it's always, it's its own thing. You're not getting a looter shooter like this anywhere else. And that's why it's got such a dedicated fan base and... I'm part of that little crowd, dude. Nah, I'm not saying every Borderlands is perfect. We haven't had a perfect Borderlands, in my opinion, since Borderlands 2. Which, there's nothing about that game I could change. The story, the gameplay, it's all amazing. Especially the story. Holy shit, the story's good. While Moon Orbs are the in-game currency you get after Chaos Chamber run, crystals are what's most important during your run. You can pick up crystals in a variety of ways during your run, but the most satisfying method is also the most consistent. Smashing a crystalline, rainbow glowing die that spawns when you've completed a room and opened up the portal to the next. Interesting. So the crystals, what the hell are they? Okay, let's find out. Let's find out. Let's find out. The room completion reward went through so many different iterations, recalls Kent. In the beginning, it was just a chest. Then we went with dice because the fantasy of the game is about tabletop role playing. Originally, you can interact with the dice to stop them rolling. And if you got a 20, you'd get better gear than if you had rolled, say, an 8. We thought that was too random, so the dice, those dice went into the breakable state that's now in the game. It's an iterative process. We wanted dice, but not all of the inherent randomness that came with them. I, I believe Assault on Dragon Keep had dice, and it was completely random, so... Nah, I don't think anybody was totally against that. How many crystals you collect impacts how many rewards you can score at the end of a Chaos Chamber dungeon, which we'll get to in a bit, so it's crucial that you snag as many crystals as you can during your run. You can amass bonus crystals by completing optional side objectives that are randomly assigned to each room. With a wide variety of possibilities, Maybe it'll protect a statue of Queen Butt Stallion before it's de defaced by baddies, smash up a statue of the villainous Dragonlord, or keep a sentient firework burning by feeding it the souls of slain enemies. Hardcore. There's not really much to unpack here. Just, yeah, the crystals, they're not necessarily random. You get them rewarded for how well you do. And Kent's favorite side objective involves defeating enemies while standing on one of two enchanted circles that spawn somewhere in the level. I like that it forces you to hold your ground, whereas the combat is usually about running around and being mobile to avoid enemies, he says. I feel that side objective brings something really different. That sounds like it could be very annoying, depending on what build you're using, though. You always have zero crystals at the start of a dungeon run, and they don't carry over between runs, so use them or lose them. How do you use the crystals exactly? So glad you asked. Okay, that's what we need to really get into, because just hearing about how we unlock crystals and shit doesn't matter too much if we don't know what the crystals do. Over the course of a Chaos Chamber run, you might stumble upon some ornate-looking altars that offer unique buffs called blessings. 
If you cop up enough crystals to activate the altar, you'll receive a blessing that applies for the remainder of your run, with subsequent altars costing more to activate as a consequence. Blessings are stackable and can be straightforward as increased critical damage or ammo capacity throw may completely change up your playstyle for the rest of the run. My favorite blessing is to use is a melee attack speed and movement speed buff, says Kent. You can just start running around and mashing the melee button to swing your way through enemies. Blessing to your passing skills can also be imbued by Queen Butt Stallion herself. You choose one of her portals at the end of the encounter. The two portals that spawn in when you've beaten a room come in for four different varieties. A crystal die that rewards you with more crystals, Queen Butt Stallion's favor via a helpful blessing a gear die that awards you new loot when you beat the encounter and an add layer of challenge in the form of a new curse the last one is perfect for those who like to live dangerously so it sounds to me like not only is this typical looter shooter madness this is a very roguelite way of doing things this is what that reminds me of you know when you run through a roguelite like uh, robo quest pick up a gear that gives you two options to like it'll increase one element and then another element at the same time pick how you run that feels like there's a lot of roguelite inspiration going in here and it's almost like two games at one it's like borderlands plus a roguelite that works for me a curse upon you curses either polar opposite of blessings debuffs for you or boons for your enemies that last the rest of the chaos chamber run and can make it that much harder for you to survive you'll have at least an inkling of the kind of challenge they'll bring as curses offered are marked as easy medium or hard by taking on a curse you'll be rewarded with extra crystals in exchange for the amped up difficulty and some of the easy curses might even benefit you if you your build can take advantage of them in my opinion the hardest curses break it up which gives your enemies increased damage via higher firing rates and accuracy whenever they're near each other says kent depending on the arena it can be pretty hard to not have all the enemies come together if you're glutton for punishment you can even spend some of your hard-earned crystals before you enter portal to make the next counter elite which makes the enemies in the next room much more difficult in return the loot they drop will be improved should you actually make it manage to make it through alive that sounds like the play if you're really just trying to grind loot you could just do elite like right off the rip as soon as you're going in or as soon as you're heading to the second area arena whatever you want to call it and just grind and if you die you die you got the loot it doesn't matter and then you can go back through without them being elite and just run this shit during testing i saw so many people playing the chaos chamber differently especially in the way they treat the crystal economy says ken some players just can't help themselves and want to buy all the blessings they find others don't use curses because they want an easier run when i was a game tester i would just do everything if it was something like this i would do all the blessings you know but as a player i would never i don't see me doing a lot of the curses at least the blessings for sure those seem smart, but as a tester, yeah, I would have bought them all. Fuck it, dude. Just see what everything does. Get get as weird as possible. I'm sure I'll get to the point where I want to do that when I'm playing this game as it comes out. My tester brain would have just used them all. That's what I would. That's me. The default. The default me. There's the fucking rabbits. You're just rewards. After you've fought tooth and nail through multiple chaos chamber rooms, taken on blessings and curses at your discretion, and put the smack down on the final boss, you deserve some worthy rewards. A wealth of treasure awaits you in the loot of chaos area. You're transported to after defeating the last boss, with a chest full of desirable loot for the taking, but for dedicated loot grinders, the real chaos chamber payout might be hiding in the bellies of the spined. Slightly disturbing rabbit statues that line the room. Above the gaping pointy tooth mouth of each rabbit statue is an icon representing a type of loot in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Guns like SMGs and assault rifles, wearable gear like rings and ambulance, and so on. By feeding a statue some of the crystals you've accumulated over your run, you can make it barf up a random piece of loot from a respective loot type. Just ignore those bits of rainbow colored bile. Through this method, you have the means to chase after the best items for certain gear slots while enjoying the random madness inherent <clears throat> inherent to the chaos chamber. Now you can target which loot type you want without just farming the same boss over and over again for 20 hours. This can't. It's still somewhat random, but the player has some control over on the kind of loot they want to prioritize. As for those crystal munching rabbits statues, you've already got I guess their inspiration. But these rabbits, you're essentially making an offering to the god of the dungeon, its creator, which is Tiny Tina. Ergo, rabbits laughs can't. Okay, so I think there's something else here that they're not really saying i feel like it's cool that you can pick whatever loot you get right for running this and being your boss and everything but i still feel like the bosses are still they're gonna drop world loot and other random loot that won't be found inside these rabbits so you're still gonna have to grind some areas for 20 plus hours maybe they won't maybe they won't but i doubt it they're, they're probably gonna have some boss specific loot that you could get in this area and then you're still gonna have to grind the 20 hours i don't know bragging rights Besides all the loot spewing rabbit statues, something else you can enjoy after a successful completion of the Chaos Chamber is a victory screen jam-packed with info that recaps your run. Here you can get an overall look at offense and defense weapons, per weapon kills, ward damage taken, ETC, etc. Etc. 
blessings and curses you took on, total crystals collected, and more. Also includes a quick overview of your entire character build, including your two multi-class selections, skill point and hero point distribution, and even the rarity of all the gear you brought into the battle. Perfect for an all-in-one screenshot to share with your pals and or on your socials. If you're wondering whose Fate Maker build truly reigns supreme, you can see where you stand thanks to featured runs in the Chaos Chamber. Each featured run will be available for a week to all players, and that particular run is seated, so it will always be the same. You can rerun it, and the same elements will always spawn in the same place. The side objectives will all be the same, explains Kent. That's freaking awesome. That's cool that you can actually like unleash your competitive side a little bit instead of just doing speed runs. That's really the only thing you could swing your dick about nowadays all of days on the victory screen for featured runs we have little icons letting you know if you rank highly for certain parameters how quickly you completed the run how difficult it was based on any curses that you picked up and how many crystals you've collected it makes for a nice little community feature where you can see oh i managed to be in the top 100 for fastest completions of that featured run it's a great way to compare builds among friends and compete to see who can get the fastest or most difficult finish on a run Another feature you'll find in the Chaos Chamber is a Chaos Trial, but you'll have to wait until closer to March 25th, of course. Launch of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands to learn more. Until then, keep watching Tiny... Bit, 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 bit. Okay, so something called the Chaos Trial, which is 100% going to work in tandem or really similar to Chaos Chamber, is something we won't know about for a while. Whatever. It's kind of lame, but, you know, keep some shit under wraps. They needed something to talk about next week, which I, I bet you it'll be next week. Uh, we're already so close. 16 days out and we'll half the game. No, this fucking shit seems sick. A lot of people are going to be hyped for this. This sounds like the best like post-game content that Gearbox has given us with anything. This sounds amazing. Sounds like a good source of longevity. I'd love to see what else they're adding. If, if we can get more post-game modes, then that's freaking awesome. And, uh, you know, that would be incredible if they gave us this. Plus, maybe Chaos Trial is something entirely different. And it's, it's even more fleshier for a post game than we thought and of course the dlcs are going to bring more stuff that that increase the gameplay loop and that the dlcs are always great from borderlands in every one of them so that's that's awesome okay well this is my first time doing this i want to say thank you for watching comment below what you're most excited for in borderlands tiny tina's wonderlands i don't think i need to say borderlands what are you most excited for is it this freaking post game shit because as of right now that and the character creation stuff is probably the two things i'm most excited for this really got me hyped this got me hyped enough to try to make a video i've never even done before which is news related which you know me i'm more just like fast talking shooty stuff multiplayer shit talking single player kind of that's that's who i am you know you've watched my streams you've watched my other videos that's that's my deal so credit to them credit to them hopefully it plays out as good as they're saying it it, it is and obviously they're not going to say it plays like shit they need to make their dollars just like i'd like to so See ya. Sorry, I got one more thing. They just announced today, like one or two days after all this information, the contents of the season pass. The first one, at least. Hopefully there's going to be more because it's kind of kind of split, a little polarizing how people feel about it. And if you want me to talk about that and we can have a discussion in the comment section, let me know. If you like this video, I can do that with that bit of information as well. So let me know and I can make a video. I might not even give a shit what you say, bitch ass, and I might just do it anyways. But you should let me know, because if there's a demand for it, then 100% uh, bitch ass, I'll do it. You bitch ass.